no, no less than the Son of God is with you. And uh, the beautiful turn to Our Lady, you know, uh, uh, Our, La Our Lady was entrusted to us and so we, we could cling to her. This beautiful message uh, during the Mass. And it was also moving that before the final blessing, the Holy Father led us into thanksgiving. Now, uh, imagine he is telling us, yeah, in the midst of all this, we should not lose this sense of being grateful and thankful. A very, very simple but Christian, deeply Christian attitude. And then, yeah, the motorcade going to the, the, the bishop's house, you know, uh, some people were whispering, uh, let the Holy Father take the closed car. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, th this is the reason why I am here. I am here to show solidarity. So if people uh, uh, had waited and had sacrificed no, under the, the heat of the sun, the winds, and also the rain, then why should the pastor not be with them? No, and uh, I asked him later on, after the Mass, he said whether he had celebrated Mass already uh, with a raincoat on no? uh, over the chasuble. I said, no, this is the first time. <laughs> so you see, unique. Uh, it's a, a historic event <laughs> also. And uh, on the flight coming back here, I asked him whether he, like the Filipinos, whether he is, uh, is accustomed to... Uh, uh, this type of typhoons and uh, storms. He said, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm, I, I have experienced occasional rain, but this type, he said, no, no, no. So again, a first, a first for him. Now, and uh, when we reached the, the archbishop's house, you know, again, the, the official program was for him to have lunch with 30 persons who had experienced uh, uh, you know, loss of life and loved ones and relatives and property. And uh, we had people from Bohol uh, who had lost also members of their bodies you know, who were present. Uh, it was an intimate encounter. Of course, we did not have time to have lunch. Uh, I entered the room earlier to brief the, the, uh, the 30 people I, and I asked them already about their situations so that when the Pope comes and uh, asks them questions, they would, and uh, so when the Pope entered the, the dining room, it was already uh, a quarter to 12 and we were given only up to 12. By 12, we should get out. You know, so he went around, greeted each one, and when he had taken his seat, I asked each one just to say a few words, especially about the loss, the loss that they had experienced. And uh, I, I, uh, I'll never forget the face of the Holy Father. Listening to each one, I lost my parents and a brother. I lost everything. And then one woman said, I lost my husband, I lost my son, and I lost five daughters. And you could see the Holy Father just shaking his head. Shaking his head. And, then, and, and at some moments he would say, oh... Oh, no. he was suffering. He was suffering. And when I asked him, do you want to say a few words no, before we go? He said, but what can, what can, what can we say? What can we say? Uh, the silence of someone before this mystery of suffering. Uh, I thought he would repeat the central message of his homily. 
but before these 30 persons, he himself was reduced to silence. The communion and solidarity that happens in silence. And I was very happy that I uh, was asked to, to join them and to do some translation work. And then he apologized to them for cutting short the, uh, the lunch. But he, has been, he encouraged them, eat, eat, <laughs> yes, because they, they stopped eating. Said, you eat, you eat. You know? uh, but, but who could eat in front of the Holy Father and the Holy Father? <laughs> <You know? laughs> they were just looking at him. I said, kumain kayo. <laughs> you eat. <laughs> uh, and then they tried. Uh, and, and then he, uh, he asked them, uh, one of them asked the Holy Father, can you please pray for the souls of our loved ones who perished during the... And the Holy Father said, uh, when I heard about the typhoon two years ago, I offered mass right away for all of you and your departed. And he said, my mass tomorrow in Manila, in Luneta, he said, the intention is for your departed. And they broke into a, an applause. And then, as uh, has been the trademark already of his, uh, of his uh, speeches, he said, please pray for me. Uh, and uh, uh, I translated it in Filipino, and they said, yes, yes, yes. And then the Pope asked, uh, are you sure you will, you will pray for me? I translate, yes, yes. <laughs> so they just, they just wanted, loved, loved uh, having him. And then, uh, of course, he, uh, he blessed the uh, center for the poor. Uh, but he, it was very quick because we had to be, uh, we had to, the, the plane had to take off at 1 o'clock. Then we went to the cathedral. His original plan was just to bless the people from the door. But um, when he saw the, the, the priest, the religious, uh, he was prevailed upon. So he, he uh, went up the altar, said a few words, cracked some jokes, uh, apologized again. You know? So it was, a, it was an intense half day. I, I, I should say I, I feel emotionally tired. You know? But my eyes were really fixed on him. Yes, as I said, while it is for me already taken for granted that he will bring inspiration to many people, what I am really curious about is how he will be affected by our people and the suffering that they convey to him. And uh, lastly, when, uh, when we had already boarded the plane, I asked him, so how, how is it, your holiness, are you tired? Are you afraid? Because this is your first typhoon. <laughs> and, uh, but he said, he said, he said, he said, this visit is really for me. This is for me. I'm learning. This is, this visit is for me. Wow, that's how to be a pastor. You learn, and you never stop learning. And you bring it to your heart, you reflect on it in the light of the Word of God, then again, you can see. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Eminence. <laughs> Father Lombardi. Thank you. I am not a witness of the... I. Of, uh, of Cardinal Tagle, but I have also <clears throat> the possibility to participate in this historical event, and then I will give you some help, uh, maybe, or some information to understand uh, the, <clears throat> the situation. Um, first of all, the Pope has been informed of the death of our young friend, here uh, immediately after coming back to the nunciature. And then he has asked immediately uh, the collaborator, Dr. Gasbar in particular, to take information about who is, 
where the family and so on, to have then the, the, the ways to find then the ways to participate and to demonstrate his uh, suffering and his participation in this, uh, uh, in this uh, death. And the, uh, the Pope today in the afternoon after coming back has uh, had a little rest and then he had uh, until uh, seven, uh, <laughs> not uh, meeting with his collaborator. Then we will learn uh, later on this evening or tomorrow what he has decided to do or how he will express his uh, uh, participation to the family of uh, uh, our friend. Uh, second thing, uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, you were already asking me in the past days about the typhoon that was coming and uh, what was the uh, preparation for us to this situation. Uh, Gasparri said to me that yesterday evening he was in contact with the pilot of the aircraft uh, who said to him, we have to leave as soon as possible because during the day the situation will be worse. And then he has said this to the Pope. Paul said, yes, I have come to the Philippines before all to be in Tacloban tomorrow. I am ready to anticipate what is needed because we have to fly there in any case. And uh, this morning, uh, as you know, the, the flight was anticipated half an hour, more or less, but it was already important. Um, <clears throat> this morning, during the flight, there was already, uh, again, a, a telephone connection with the, uh, the people that were at the ground in Tacloban, and they say there is uh, great rain, great uh, wind, it is very difficult to celebrate the mass uh, in, on open air. And then they had some proposal to go to the cathedral uh, or to go in the sacristy in the tent and to show to the television the, the Pope celebrating mass. <laughs> Gasparri said this to the Pope, said, absolutely no, it is impossible. Where are the people? The people are on the, on the ground, out. We have to be with them and celebrate with them. This was totally clear. But uh, it is, uh, if you understand, uh, with the Pope Francis, uh, this, uh, there's not a need uh, <coughs> many explication. And then, as you have heard, at the very beginning of the homily, he has said uh, how his personal experience was uh, one, hour, one year ago as he was uh, informed and he saw the image of the typhoon and his decision to come to the Philippines came then as a decision to be with the people that were suffering of the, of the typhoon. Uh, he has expressed this very sincerely, but it was really a moment of truth uh, about uh, his most profound intention for this, uh, for this visit. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> yes, as uh, the Cardinal has said, um, this experience of celebrating mass uh, uh, under the rain uh, with the storm, this is something that has a profound uh, meaning in this situation because this is exactly the experience of these people uh, now and uh, much uh, worse uh, one, one year ago. And then uh, to participate in their situation, you have not to be here in a sunny day, with, uh, with, but in this situation, it was most profound, very profound experience. Uh, <clears throat> if, if I can, I would remember another similar experience with John Paul II in Sarajevo. Sarajevo is the capital of the Bosnia, was destroyed by the civil war, by the war in, in, uh, in uh, Yugoslavia. And the Pope John Paul II decided to, to, to be there to celebrate the mass and to be present with the people after, immediately after the war as he came. And uh, the, the mass was celebrated during a 
uh, wind and snow storm. Uh, I remember this. It was terrible cold, and it was very difficult to resist in the situation. But the Pope also, John Paul II, said at the end, yes, in this way we have really taken part in the experience and in the suffering of these people. I think there are such situations, there are, uh, have problems obviously, but have a profound spiritual meaning of uh, uh, being with the people that suffer the consequences of these uh, tragedies and, and disasters. How many people were there? Uh, I think uh, 200, 300,000, eh? maybe 200,000 at the, the place of the mass and then many other on the street. Uh, if we say 300,000, I think this is realistic. Eh? This is a huge number with the situation uh, in which the, the event take, took place. Um, Another little thing uh, is uh, uh, the, the, the Marian uh, uh, aspect of the, of the homily of the Pope. This is also characteristic. And the icon of Our Lady of Perpetual Help was wonderful, was really wonderful. I don't know if you have noted the image of the icon of, the, of Our Lady. Uh, and it was so expressive with the little child that uh, uh, asked for, for help. This, and uh, this has touched very much also the Pope and uh, this dimension has to be, uh, to be noted, uh, Our Mother, Mommy, and so on. Um, but also the, the, the celebration was wonderful, organized, and the, the, the songs in Benizaya were wonderful. And you have noted that even if the, time, the weather was terrible, the, the uh, attention in the celebration was uh, uh, very high. Another little thing, in the way through, uh, behind, um, <laughs> from the bus uh, to the to the uh, to the to the bishop's house there was a stop of the pope at a little uh, poor house of a family that also suffered very much by the typhoon. The idea was to have a longer stop, which so was <laughs> reduced very much, but it was another sign of personal contact with concrete people on the way uh, <clears throat> to, the, uh, to the Archbishop's house. Um, another aspect of the, um, of the events that was previewed was the blessing of the center for the poor near to the Archbishop's house. This took uh, practically uh, took place only with a blessing from the, uh, from the Pope Mobile uh, without a specific stop and uh, a little stop and the blessing. But the, uh, the center of the poor is also an important institution and uh, if you can report about it uh, with the information, uh, it has a certain uh, importance. It was built uh, with the help of Corunum. Therefore, Cardinal Sara was there here in the, in the plane with the Pope because he was the prefect of Corunum as this, uh, this center has been uh, built. And the organization is leaded by the Korean community uh, that the Pope has met in Korea in a large center for handicapped and, uh, and uh, children and elderly people and so on. Eh? And he says there are connection to the other, to the other work of charity that the Pope knows and has visited. Uh, <clears throat> I, I have to stress another little thing that can be interesting. The Pope has not uh, pronounced the full text of the homily that we have given you, and has not pronounced the text of the speech in the cathedral. But these texts uh, were written and prepared by the Pope for this occasion, and we publish them 
and you can use them as public test of the Pope, even if he has not pronounced them. This is an important thing. If you uh, read the text, find uh, important quotation, then you can uh, use them it is important in the context of this uh, of this journey because the Pope say many things also in this speech that are well integrated in the in the uh, total uh, horizon of this speech. For instance, for instance, also in the uh, in the text of the homily, he had written. Um, <clears throat> Uh, countries, organizations, and individuals across the globe put the needy first. It is an example that should be followed. I ask government leaders, international agencies, benefactors, and people of goodwill not to give up. There is much that remains to be done. Though the headlines have changed, the needs continue. The, the Pope says expressly, you have to continue to help the, to these people. And uh, also, let us pray in particular that it will make everyone more sensitive to the cry of our brothers and sisters in need. Let us pray that it will lead to a rejection of all forms of injustice and corruption, which by stealing from poor poison the very roots of society. Then the idea also of the corruption and the justice has to be continued also in the text that he had prepared for today. And also in the cathedral, uh, in the speech for the cathedral, there is an important point about uh, <coughs> the uh, social justice that you can quote and use. I ask that the poor throughout this country be treated fairly, that their dignity be respected, that political and economic policies be just and inclusive, that opportunities for employment and education be developed, and that obstacles to delivery of social service be removed. Our treatment of the poor is the criterion on which each of us will be judged. I ask all of you and all responsible for the good of society to renew your commitment to social justice and the betterment of the poor both here and in the Philippines as a whole. Eh? These things, I think, are important texts. I uh, recommend not to leave these by side because they are not uh, actually pronounced, but are texts of the Pope for you and for the Philippines. Um, well, this is practically what I had in mind to say to you, and uh, um, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Father Lombardi. Before we entertain questions from the floor, may we know if we are now connected to the IMC, to the Inter uh, International Media Center? Uh, good evening, Edwin. Uh, uh, your Eminence, Your Ed Grace, this is Mello. We're ready. So please start the questions. We'll follow suit. Okay, thank you. I'll get back to you, uh, IMC. The floor is now open for questions. Please begin with your name and the network you represent. Who has the first question? Good evening, uh, John Neri from The Inquirer. Um, that was a very powerful, very moving uh, homily in Tacloban. Um, just a quick question, Eminence and Father Lombardi. Uh, when and why did the Pope decide to set aside his prepared remarks and uh, speak from the heart? Uh, every time in which uh, we are in a particular intense situation, uh, the Pope desired to speak uh, from the heart. Sometime, maybe he is tired or he feels not to be able to find the right word and then he reads the speech. But if he feels that the emotion and the uh, the strength is there to express more spontaneously his art than he does this. And uh, in, this, uh, in this trip, this is very uh, interesting, this is a, a 
system, uh, paradigmatic situation because the Pope has done a great effort to prepare himself with text in English to be understood and to let the, the people and, uh, listen directly from his voice what he has to say. But uh, he feels sometimes that he can express still better what he has in the art through his spontaneous uh, expression in Spanish, sometimes in Italian, this here in Spanish is normal, and uh, through the translation. Eh? Also because he has he, a, a wonderful translator, we have to say, that, that, that uh, does his, his work very well. And then he, I think that this mix is, is very, very good, in particular during the meeting with the families, it functions very, very well. But this morning, there was not possible to have a longer time, and then the Pope has uh, done a synthesis from his heart. It, it was, for the people that were present, sufficient. Uh, may, may I add, I sort of uh, suspected that something like that would happen when uh, we were told, uh, first of all, that uh, the mass will be made simpler. And so not all of us would concelebrate. So if you notice, there were just uh, Cardinal Parulim, myself, Archbishop Du, you know, who were asked. And then Monsignor Miles was asked to, uh, <laughs> to be there. So I said, oh, probably the Holy Father, seeing, you know, seeing uh, the situation, really would want to speak out of, uh, outside of the prepared text. Uh, and uh, yeah, it happened. It is your turn, IMC. Do you have a question there? Yes, we have. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yes, please. Let's start with the gentleman here, please. Please identify yourself and the media entity you come from. Uh, good evening. Uh, my question your is- Your name and your uh, entity, please. I'm Teddy Lechadores of Metro Daily. Uh, my question is uh, directed to uh, Cardinal Luis Tagle and uh, Father Federico Lombardi. Uh, what is it that makes people shed tears every time the Holy Father comes near? This is not the usual. I saw the people crying, uh, bursting in tears. And this is not the usual uh, uh, tears of joy, uh, Father. Your Eminence, Father Lombardi. You, uh, uh, let me start it and then you, you correct it, Father. <laughs> uh, in, 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 the, in the Christian tradition, there is something that is called the gift of tears. You know? And uh, it is a gift because uh, it comes when there is a profound experience. Uh, especially a deeply human experience which also reveals to you uh, something of the divine. And it is so profound and you know you are before it and uh, your body responds to it in a very physical way. And one of those uh, ways is through tears. And so, as, 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 as what is the name of the, uh, the person who asked the question? Uh, oh, sir. Yeah, from Metro Daily. Yeah, from Metro Daily. Yeah. As he had a, it, it doesn't look like tears of joy, but if you ask the people, it is also tears of joy. You know? uh, tears of joy at the same time, tears of, uh, of consolation, tears of uh, being uh, considered important, or just the, the tears of realizing I matter. No, uh, I was approached, I was seen, etc. No, uh, you could see that. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Maybe. I, yes. I have not very much to add. I think uh, it was a profound answer for the Cardinal Tagle. Um, Sometimes uh, we are very profoundly moved uh, uh, until the, 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 the roots uh, of, our, of our hearts, of our being, and then uh, uh, it happens that uh, we are a little uh, confused uh, and uh, um, 
it is not, uh, not easy to explain what we are uh, experiencing, but we feel that there is something working be, uh, in, in, in uh, us, uh, in our profound uh, soul and, and art. And uh, <coughs> uh, this is normally, uh, normally expressed also through tears. Uh, um, there can be uh, emotion, com commotion, we say, and uh, in the faith, uh, we announce consolation to the people that are uh, in profound suffering or that are uh, in, in profound uh, conversion or in a, a situation of, of a particular uh, deep uh, feelings. And uh, in this sense, uh, uh, the, the, the Christian faith has to announce uh, that uh, Christ is with you. This is the message that the Pope has given. Even if you are profoundly moved and uh, uh, suffering, uh, you are not alone. And what you feel is something that can be the beginning of a way of uh, uh, healing, a way of uh, uh, and resurrection and joy. This is the, the message was through the cross to the resurrection. I'll get back to you. IMC from the Diamond Hotel. Who has yes. the next question? Yes, sir. Hi, good oh. evening. Uh, this, my name is Dario Agnota. I write for Kyoto News, Japanese news agency. I'd like to know more about the lunch uh, with the Pope and the 30 other invited guests. Uh, what uh, what was served in that lunch, okay. and did the Pope say something about the lunch? Did he like a particular ulam during the lunch? Thank you. You know, uh, uh, I was not able to eat, <laughs> and uh, I think uh, I, I I saw in front of me just a, a bowl of soup, uh, and then uh, it was time to go, so I. I was not served. You know, I'm feeling hungry right now. I, I hope this press conference ends uh, in a good, uh, how do you call it, lunch and dinner combined. Oh. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, I saw the Holy Father tasting the soup, and I, and I tasted it, and I said, Holy Father is cold already. He said, don't worry. He said, it's hot. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 the weather no, is, is, is warm here in the room, so... Uh, that's okay. The soup may be cold. It's uh, some sort of chicken soup. Uh, I uh, uh, no, no, not tinola because I I prepare that. No, it was not that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but that's a good question. I, and, and I did not see the, uh, the dishes uh, because we we really rushed through it. No. But the Pope was able to eat the uh, what do you call this? The uh, uh, it's something I said from the Pope. The, the, from the, the soup. soup. Yeah, and uh, I saw him. Uh, Cutting a, a bit of, of the salad, you know, but on the plane he uh, he uh, ate some, I think, potato chips or something. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> so I am see. I hope you heard that we're rushing to to uh, to feed the cardinal. <laughs> yes, we we'll just no, have two no, questions. No. Don't worry, Edwin. Don't we'll just have a tear for me. Okay. Can we have the first question that you have there? Yes. Uh, let's have the gentleman on the red shirt. Please identify yourself and the entity you come from. And make please. it short, please. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. And keep it short, sweetheart. Uh -huh. Question. <laughs> uh, good evening. I'm Juvino Galang of Bombo Radio Philippines. Yes, please. Uh, question to uh, Archbishop Tagle. Sir, uh, how was the Pope feeling after a uh, being first time experiencing heavy rains on his uh, state visit? Well, I, I think he, 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 he was also quite worried. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we, we were told the, the flight must leave at 1 o'clock. So he, uh, when, when, when I, I approached him and said, is it true, Your Holiness, that you will not enter the cathedral? You'll just greet the people uh, uh, at the door? I said, but uh, the 10 kilometers to get to the, to the airport. He said, oh, okay. No, but uh, in the end, he also went inside. He was very, I, I could see how... Um, concerned he was. And twice in the lunch and in the cathedral, he explained to the people that if we do not take off at one o'clock, the situation might get worse. 
and we do not know how we could get to Manila. So uh, a part of him probably really doesn't want to uh, make the situation something, something of a problem for the people in Tacloban, the security, etc. You know, but he also looked excited, you know, because he said, uh, "This is for me. This is an experience for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, being uh, learning something, you know, experiencing something, and uh, it's very pastoral, getting to know what." people go through. In fact, he, he was surprised that we in the Philippines get an average of 20 to 22 typhoons. He said, what? He said, and this one, this is just a, a normal typhoon. Typhoon is normal. Okay, may we have the next question from the floor? Yes, ma'am. Hello, I'm Katarina Francisco from Rappler. I'd like to ask, what would we have expected from the Pope if his trip hasn't been cut short? And um, were there any surprise visits or activities that were in his schedule or itinerary? Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, if, as I said at the beginning, even if it was cut short, all the planned activities uh, were accomplished. So if it were not cut short, then we just have, we should have followed this schedule, like uh, an hour here or uh, two hours there. No, but this time uh, we spent just a few minutes. It is your turn, IMC. Go Thank ahead you with your question. Yes, please. Please go ahead. Please identify yourself. Uh, I'm Bernie Anabo of Metro National Daily News. Actually, I have question and request to uh, Father Lombardi. Please go ahead. Uh, kindly extend to Pope Francis because we don't have any time to talk with him. A lot of people yes. trying to talk with him. We have wished to please pray our country for peace and uh, pray for us, the media practitioners, for our protection because sometimes we were in critical situation and rendering truth and balanced journalism. Could it be possible, Father Lombardi? Second question. But that's a request, right? Uh, that is a request. Okay. My question is addressed to your uh, eminence, Cardinal Tagli. I would like to ask what was the first impression of the Pope to my fellow Wara in Leti Samar, considering that even we were devastated by Typhoon Haiyan, we, we, didn't, we didn't lose hope and the calamity that we experienced served as a challenge, how deep our feet is with God. Thank you yes. very much. Your Eminence, please. For the first question, obviously, oh, yes. the, the Pope is uh, always very attentive to the needs of all, and he knows very well also the journalists because um, a group of them is always traveling with him, and he is very aware of the problems that the journalists have, and uh, <coughs> they work, uh, and then uh, he is, uh, will pray also for them and for their work, because he knows that the journalists, the communicators, are very important collaborators of spreading the good news. His service, his uh, service for the for the mankind, his uh, announce of the of the of the message of the uh, of the gospel, can go far if he is helped by the good work of the communicators. In this sense, uh, he uh, loves the work of the communicators and he uh, hopes that they are aware of the importance of their vocation, I would say, of their mission. And uh, in this sense, uh, you can be uh, sure that he will pray for you and for all the communicators of the world because they have a very important mission to, to help uh, to uh, spread the message of love, of uh, mutual understanding, of justice and peace and so on. Thank you very much, IMC. Uh, uh, for the, yes, your the, eminence, please. The, uh, I, I think the Holy Father was quite uh, shaken uh, to see for himself and to hear the, the stories of people, especially the, uh, the, the young people who shared with him the loss of their parents and brothers and sisters. He asked me about one girl, where does the girl live now? And I said, oh, uh, she lives with uh, 
a friend of her mother. You know? So uh, I think uh, uh, I, I could only guess what's happening in his mind, what's going through in his mind, like, uh, wow, so young and already subjected to such suffering. But he also is, was quite inspired, you know, by the, uh, the faith, the hope of, of the people. You know? And in, at one point, uh, we, we even, uh, the same biblical text came to our minds, and, uh, how Jesus praised uh, uh, the Father, God the Father, for revealing to mere children you know, the secrets of the kingdom. So this simple, even suffering people, uh, why do they, do they know the joy of the kingdom of God? Yes, thank you very much. So Edwin, thank- we'll have one more question later. Yes, okay, so we'll have a final question from IMC, but before that, yes, ma'am, you were raising your hand. Good evening, I'm Jam Sasante from GMA Network. Uh, Father, uh, Cardinal, we were informed that during the turbulent flight back to Manila, uh, Pope Francis stood up and approached someone. And may we know who that person is and what Pope Francis told that person during the flight back to Manila? I, I do not know whom he approached, no. Yeah, but I saw him getting up. Yeah, but I don't know. I just I did not uh, follow him with my eyes. <laughs> okay, it is your turn. Yes. Uh, no, uh, I think he had something to say to Monsignor Viganò, to the director of the of the Vatican Television Center. Uh, I don't know if he was asking if the the the, the event were broadcasting or not. Uh, Something like this, a simple information uh, that he uh, sometimes he comes or he calls me and say me, please remember to do uh, this uh, this point in your briefing and so on. This is very normal. If he has something in mind, he comes and he says to you. Okay. So may we have your final question, IMC, and then we'll have our final question from the floor here at Diamond Hotel. Go ahead. Thank you, Edwin. The question comes from me as the moderator. <laughs> oh. Now the question That's goes to His Eminence, uh, Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle, and to Father Lombardi. Uh, His Holiness will face the youth tomorrow and celebrate Mass at the Luneta. Kindly tell us, how tired is he considering his age of 78? Thank you. Uh, at the end of every event, I, <laughs> I, I would nag him, how are you? Do you, do you feel tired? And he's very frank and very honest. He says, yes, a little. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he even, with the long hours of standing you know, on the Pope Mobile and during his speeches, I, I think uh, he begins to feel. But when he sees the crowds, in fact, uh, when was that? I, I, I told him upon uh, the recommendation of Dr. Gianni said, you whisper to the Pope that it's okay for him to sit, you know. Uh, uh, but I, 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 I told him that, and then he sat. And mm-hmm. then when he saw a crowd, he stood up again. Uh, so uh, he, in that sense, he does not get tired. It's mm-hmm. easy to energize him when people... They, and, and he has a reason. He said, they, uh, they uh, have been sacrificing, waiting for me. So why deprive them you know, of, mm-hmm. of this opportunity? Thank you, Reminence. So, thank you very much, Mello. Father Lombardi's thoughts, please. But, um, yes, but uh, I have practically the same to say. Uh, our experience is that uh, uh, he has an incredible energy and a good, uh, uh, a good uh, capacity to uh, re- uh, to uh, retrieve the, the, the re- to recuperate to recuperate mm-hmm. the, the the energy with uh, two hours uh, rest. Eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, Sometimes he has canceled uh, some little event in, in Rome because he was too tired and he said, I will not uh, do a good uh, service being too tired in, uh, with, with the people. And then I prefer to cancel. I sleep two hours and then it begins <laughs> again. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, is, uh, this is wonderful. Uh, uh, is very, very. Uh, it can very soon be again in good in good condition, but I have also to say that we are 
always very surprised that a man of his age can do what he is doing in Rome and also abroad. Eh? I have asked him once in the, uh, during the, the uh, journey in Korea, because it was also very, very surprising. Uh, and he said to me, ah, yeah, this is the grace of state. Grazia di Stato, Grazie come dice? State. Grace of office. Grace of office. That is, if, you, if God gives you a, a particular charge, God gives you also uh, what you need to do this charge. And then I have received from God the, this mission to serve as pastor of the church, and uh, God gives me strength that I had never thought to have. Mm -hmm. And this, for me, he is the first person that is surprised how he can, in these years, do, uh, do so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this sense, he, he explains this clearly in a spiritual way as a gift of God that helps him to do his service for the church. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much, Father Lombardi. Thank IMC, you. we look forward to having like an exchange with you again tomorrow. And yes, we uh, will. Yes, as an expression of mercy and compassion to our panelists who have, haven't had lunch yet. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> May we have the last question here from the floor? Or last two. Would that be okay? Can we have last two questions? The last two yeah. questions? Okay, that lady in blue and then to be followed by the gentleman. In. Good evening, fathers. Daniel Gabriel po from UST Varsitarian. Fathers, I would like to go back po to the itinerary. You mentioned everything was accomplished. Would, can we know more about the, the candle lighting at the mass grave where the, the prayers, um, was that also accomplished po? Uh, wh mass well, grave po. At the mass grave? Yes. Uh, um, I was not immediately near to him, but as he came out of the cathedral before taking the, the Pope Mobile, he was there and he has given a blessing. This is sure, eh? but uh, uh, I don't think that he has uh, also the, the candle lighting. But uh, sure, the, uh, is the, the blessing that he has given to the memorial, this is clear. This is a precise moment of coming out from the cathedral before going, uh, taking the, the Pope Mobile. The gentleman in blue. Yes, and then we'll have the final question from the gentleman in brown. The final, final question. <laughs> Father Lombardi, uh, could you tell us uh, what uh, did the Pope do this afternoon uh, since uh, 2 p.m. until now? Thank you very much. Rest. Yes, this is, uh, we are all happy that after the, the, this morning that was very, very uh, <laughs> engaging and uh, uh, he has decided not to take new initiative during the afternoon, but to rest and so to, to be prepared for, the, for tomorrow. I don't know if this evening he will have new ideas, but uh, <laughs> until, until seven it was not previewed and he had to go to dinner at seven. He probably rested and dreamt like St. Joseph. Wow. <laughs> and the gentleman? Uh, good evening, Minardo Makaraiga, John Funk Press. Uh, to either of the gentlemen. Uh, sir, uh, there's supposed to be a, the typhoon coming closer to, the, to Manila and it might uh, cause even stronger rains and winds during the mass tomorrow at Luneta, perhaps causing the same kind of danger that happened in, uh, happened in Leyte. Uh, is there any anticipation of any changes or anything that might happen if the typhoon does approach Manila? I mean, uh, maybe uh, the, the event this morning was a, a rehearsal for, uh, <laughs> for tomorrow, so he'll be an expert. <laughs> so, be, yeah, a round of applause, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So, before your closing statement, Your Eminence, I just would like to read to you an announcement regarding the Quirino Grandstand event tomorrow. So, do we have some media coordinators here who could possibly answer some questions after I've announced this? 
and close the, the press briefing. One, pre-selected media personnel should proceed to the International Media Center, the tent in Manila Hotel, at 6 a.m. Two, those with general media access, yes, 6 a.m., those with general media access ID should proceed to Orosa entrance. They are assigned to the quadrants on the left and on the right side behind the bleachers. Gate opens at 6 a.m. Once inside, you will no longer be allowed to leave the premises. Please make sure to bring your necessities. Three, general public are encouraged to bring Santo Nino images, statues to the mass. Your Eminence. Yeah, so uh, tomorrow we have uh, the youth, another favorite uh, uh, dialogue partner of uh, our Pope, and uh, the Mass in honor of the Santo Nino, you know, uh, the child Jesus. So uh, the youth, and then uh, in the evening, the Mass of uh, the child. So I'm, I'm looking forward to his uh, sharing. What does it mean for all of us to be childlike? You know, for indeed he is also a, a good example of childlikeness. You know, in his humility, in his energy. You know, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so that ends today's press briefing on the short but sweet encounter in Tacloban. Have a blessed evening, everyone. God bless you all. Thank you.